is Miss Joro. Welcome to my Mixtapes episode one. I'll be introducing you Benizi Santa Maria, who's a street photographer in Melbourne and also a good friend of mine. So I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to please like and subscribe at the end of this and I'll catch you at the end. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Joro. Welcome to my channel. My first guest is Benizi Santa Maria, who is a street photographer and uh, suffering from hay fever as well, like the rest of us in Melbourne. So Ben, tell us your backstory. Oh, yeah. Backstory. What What do you want to know? Uh, uh, when how, I was born. Well, <laughs> how did you come about deciding to? What made you start liking photography? What made you start, and how many years ago was that? Well, my brother got me into it. Actually, uh, was a generous soul and got me my first camera. Yeah. In those days, it was back in the day. It was film. Uh, most people now uh, do not remember film, <laughs> so. It was a film camera, and I just got hooked on it. Found the whole process to be quite meditative. You walk around, not thinking about the world or much at all, and all you're focused on is on what's in front of you or what may show up in front of you. So that's the excitement. You don't know what's going to happen in front of you. You might walk the same street in the same environment, the scene. Might be the same, but the actors, your subjects, are always different. If your subjects the same, uh, their mannerisms might be different on the day. So yeah. even if you walked in the same street, going to the same cafe and looking out the same window, and as Mr. Jones or who might just come out to read the papers or have a smoke, the body language might be different on that day. So you can anticipate the scene, but you can't predict. So there's a difference. You've always been an observer with people like, you, you know, in your early days, you used to do writing as well. And did you used to do similar things as that? You know, just observe people on the street and write about them as well? Yeah, yeah, pretty much so. Uh, observation, if you go back to photography, it's two most important elements are, of course, uh, observation and anticipation. So these are the two that you would have. So if you didn't have these two, it would indicate that you, you're not interested and you have to have interest yep. i think in in in, in the whole scene uh even in writing, so you've got to have an interest in the people or the culture or the setting that you, you're going to write about so so, so that's it so so interest i think how long ago was that when you actually started taking photos of of people in melbourne uh, that was before my uh three marriages and divorces <laughs> <laughs> just i'm just Holy i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so no, no, no. was it was it five years would it be five years or more no it's it's more than that i i have been taking pictures uh, photographs since i was uh in my late teens really uh, when, with so, the film camera then so because w- w- i remembered you, you started getting more serious when you entered the uh what do you call it the senior exhibition where you took photos of a lot of senior citizens in your local council. Oh, that, that's that's just a play thing. I was messing around with things I could do in, let's say, uh, Photoshopping. And I'm not really keen on that, but I was just messing around with some pictures of my, my clients. And, and I was just showing it to one of my colleagues and they got interested. And uh, it started rolling on from there. And they uh, commissioned me to do that project, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And that's quite a while back now. And the subjects have gone up there upstairs but um was that 10 years now no hang on uh 2013 2012 oh wow okay so so it's it's uh it's quite a quite a while back 13 and that that was commissioned work and i get to look at the pictures almost every day is because they are hanging around in my office but uh, i've moved on from there uh one i i think if you're a photographer you should never be too precious about the images Mm. Uh, never, never you move on, take new things as the, 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 the saying goes. If you would ask me a question, which is your favorite image or which is your best photo, then I'll say, that's the one I'm about to take. So it's the next one I'm about to take. Uh, so it's never, you don't, you celebrate your wins. Uh, of course, you, you've got some images that you like. If you didn't like any of the images, you wouldn't be taking you, you wouldn't be taking any photographs at all then. So you've got to like them, but don't be too precious. Move did, on. Did you, did you ever um, use film or was it always digital camera? A film. Film started. I've still got a whole box of uh, <laughs> negatives that I've got to have a look in my younger days when I've had dreadlocks and, you know, <laughs> and I was in a Rasta band. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Rastafari. you with dreadlocks. 
dreadlocks. Must be way before I met you, dreadlocks. Uh, ages and ages ago. So now I've got to recognize that I, I'm directed towards uh, being a monk. <laughs> Not much oh of a choice God. now with the hairstyle. So, yeah, so just curious, how much is it to develop film? Like, uh, yeah, not many people now. If I were to take, I, I met a, a young guy, uh, yeah. an Asian student. He had a roll of flax around his neck, and, and it seems to be quite popular amongst uh, younger people now. And I noticed that in, in Melbourne, at least, uh, a lot of the Asian guys, uh, students, mm. like having uh, film cameras around their necks uh, for some reason. And I asked him, why film? And he says he just likes the organic process, that you have to be disciplined, you have to observe these disciplines like say observe and anticipate so you don't yeah. waste your film yeah. whereas in digital you can just fire away like i'm doing now and it's uh sometimes it's not helpful because you have this whole backlog of pictures sift through the sort and yeah. it makes more extra work so i should train myself and i should think like i'm shooting film again so it's yeah. a discipline and, and he enjoys that process I bet you he's also got a Super 8 camera as well. Are they that type as well, like with the Super 8 vintage camera? He has that that Rolleiflex. I don't know whether you're familiar with Rolleiflex. It's a mid format, and you look from the top. It's got this oh. viewfinder. It's got a viewfinding lens and the, the like, actual lens. Like the old, you the know, image. where you know, except you don't put the blanket over your head. <laughs> No, no, no. This this is out in the field. <laughs> a lot of a lot of photographers, even street photographers back in the day, would walk around with this camera. And one of the things that is good about this camera is you, you're not aiming aiming it straight your sub at your subject. Mm. You're looking down into the viewfinder, so people may not no. be aware that you're actually taking the picture. And back in the day, people were not precious about themselves. Uh, hey, don't take my picture. Stuff like that. It, it, it was a different environment, different era. I travel quite a bit and I find that maybe in the Western world or maybe in Japan, uh, they are a little bit precious. They are bylaws and you're not allowed to take pictures and people can get angry and all that. When you go to a place like 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 India, parts of India, rural India especially, people will be rushing. Take my picture, take my picture. And eventually you get a whole crowd of people, a whole village around you wanting you to take pictures, you know, so, and they love it, so... I'd be, so, I'd, I'd be a bit, you know, probably put off if I was sitting at a cafe and some stranger took a photo. Yeah. If uh, I knew, if yeah, I knew, yeah. or even especially on public yeah. transport. You're not going to may <laughs> s- spray me or anything like that. That's why you, uh, street photographers tend to uh, have this saying, if you're, uh, I think it was Robert Kappa or something was saying that, that yeah. if, you, if, you, if you, you, you're you not... Uh, but I don't know what the saying is. If you're not close enough, then you, you, you got to get closer or something like that. I yeah. I, I, I think, um, yeah, no, well, I suppose there's a lot of YouTubers out there now who are yeah. just, you know, the camera and the GoPro or whatever and stuff. I mean, I've always been conscious about, you know, like people, you know, walking on the street with their selfie stick and, you know, vlogging. And I don't know, I, I get to get the courage to do that because I don't see it much where I live in. <laughs> Probably no, but that's system. that's people more interested in vlogging and vlogging yeah. is about you yourself. Yeah. Uh, vlogging is about you, the photographer, or the person who's vlogging. The center stage is really you. It's about you really, and you you uh, transplant yourself in an environment like say before the Taj Mahal, like to show people that you've been there. So it's really about the photographer. Whereas if you're a street documentary photographer, then you are essentially just the observer and the person is going to document that. You, you yeah. are documenting, observing and documenting. So it's not about you anymore. So you are mostly behind the camera. There is a difference of vlogging and doing street, say, or documentary. Street and documentary can overlap. I still don't understand what street photography is. Some people may be too precious about it and you've got to have a certain look. I, I don't know, maybe a Parisian scene. Uh, like the Grave Street. Black and white, uh, something like that. Nice signage. Everyone takes a photo of the Grave Street. Yeah, art deco, some graffiti yeah. in the background, some shadows on the wall, and uh, some Banksy. Pictures. It's it's chopped off because it's not about the subject anymore. It's about giving some kind of a semblance of a scene, a uh, streetscape or something like that. Okay. They can do that. So sometimes it's, it's really hard to understand, and I don't seek to understand it. I'm not precious about it. I think that everything everything that you should 
on the street, off the street, about the street, uh, above is a street photo. Whether it's good or bad street photography is another question. Have you had any issues when you took photos of people? Have you had uh, any- not really. Uh, not Thank really. You. Only the police. <laughs> Only the police. <laughs> what, during the protest? <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> you gotta, you gotta see that there, there. I learned something about this recent exhibition. I was interviewing uh, mm. one of the exhibitors uh, at the exhibition, the one that you you attended yourself, uh, Street yeah. Sit Home or something. Yeah. Uh, shot in the heart of Melbourne, and I asked him what inspires you. Just uh, you know, what do you find interesting in uh, inspiring? What inspires you in, in in photographing people? And he said something. I either fish. Or a hunt. And I, I didn't know this term, so I wasn't familiar. Fishing is like you wait. Yeah. You wait in the corner and you wait for something to pass by, something interesting to happen. So, like you, so you can just wait there. I shouldn't be saying these words. You, yeah. uh, you, you can <laughs> yeah. wait forever. You can yeah, wait yeah. for half the day, lighting conditions for the uh, the thunderstorm to pass, and you just wait in the street corner, that, that uh, one corner, and, and, and that's it one spot yeah. and you fish you wait for the big fish to uh, strike the other one is a hunter and he enjoys that also you uh, see something interesting and you chase that subject around the block but here's where it gets tricky because uh, in both like fishing depending on what people might think you, you might be seen as a suspicious character you know yeah. and if you chase someone around the block um <laughs> You might be uh, charged for stalking. Yes, yeah, stalking so, or a peeping stalking, uh, uh, So you've got to be, that's why I say observation and anticipation, yeah, the second yeah. one, yeah, is yeah. very important. You've got to predict, you've got to be able to read the scene, be fast, get out of there. You've taken your shots, a few shots, and then get out of there. Run, but make it seem very casual. And that's what street photography is. You don't try to uh, apply rules. There are street photography workshops being held every now and then where the expert in inverted yeah. commerce would say that there are rules. Mm. Um, and if you're going to set rules to yourself, uh, herein lies the danger. Uh, you're going to look like everyone else. Your mm. photographs are just going to look like everyone else, else's picture. It's going to be generic. I just thought, do you dress up as a yaoi and camouflage yourself? No, no, no. Just, just dress up as simply as you can, not not too striking. <laughs> don't, wear, don't wear pointy boots and... and, and, and like plunging neck likes with <laughs> tight leather jeans, leather jeans, and that sort of stuff, and 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 gold <laughs> chains. And you, you, you don't want that. So, be uh, decently, casually dressed, depending on the environment, and 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 that that's it. And try to be as invisible as possible. Yeah. Uh, when I say invisible, you still got to have a presence because sometimes you want to uh, tempt that interaction between yourself and the subject. You don't want to be noticed, but at the same time, you want to be noticed. Yeah. So that's that's a tricky one. When you're in a scene, sometimes you want that eye contact, that flitting glimpse, and, and that flitting glimpse, you don't want to pose or anything like that. You don't want to ask your subject, can you pose for me? So it's got to be casual, unprepared, yeah. unplanned. And so by being present while being absent is a good thing. You have to be noticed just for that, fleeting glimpse when the person passes by mm-hmm. and they give you that that eye contact sometimes that you want yeah uh, that, that rush person is rushing by heading for the office it's a stressful day the whole stage has been set you can see that person from a distance and you want that person and a person rushes by and and sticks the finger up at you beautiful wonderful <laughs> 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 Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, that's very Melbourneian. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so people can be a little bit precious with their space sometimes. We we did encounter uh, a couple, and uh, I was in a group walk, a photo walk, and and this person, uh, a member of our group, started photographing a couple, and they were yeah. very good looking people, very well dressed, and the guy wanted me don't take. <laughs> You can't take my girlfriend's picture. She was Beyonce or something like that. Uh, uh, and and he started saying, no, she's in a public yeah. space, public yeah. view. So I can take my photograph. It's not illegal. And mm. he started a little argument there. But I wouldn't get involved in that. You see, So uh, it's a waste of time. You just move on. Really, because if you start the whole legal uh, debate, yeah. what's legal and what's not some people will not never understand that anyway. Yeah, so you yeah, just yeah. move on. I said, "Oh, really? Yeah. I'm sorry." Yeah, uh, I but if, I, if they would ask you to delete, 
And yeah. so, no, no, no worries. It's not important anyway. Mm-hmm. I prefer taking pictures of my dog. See, you know, <clears throat> this is just for fun. Yeah, yeah, the serious yeah. stuff is when I yeah, photograph yeah. my cat. Yeah. So, so, so you yeah. don't make make light of what is not heavy in the first place. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Let's just put some photos on screen, and you want to talk over it and see what we'll talk about each photo. Or what? yeah, do you know how to do it? Yeah, I'll try one. I'll see. Yeah. See Come how I get on. one. Um, oh, geez. Um, share desktop. Okay, share desktop. Open. Oh, you shouldn't reveal your your lack of, you know, preparation here. You know. Oh my gosh, no. I mean, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I mean, what's going on? Okay, let me go here. All right. What do you want to know? Tell us about this picture. So what, okay. what year was this? What year was this um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, this would be 2011. Okay. And it's an early one. And if you remember the, uh, the location, it's uh, Collins Street and Swanson Street, the intersection. Okay. Where the hotel is now. There's a big hotel there. Collins Street and Swanson uh, Street. Collins and, and it's a place that used to be called City Square. Oh yeah, uh, oh, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's called, oh jeez, my brain. Yeah, the good old City Square. Oh jeez, what's that? Yeah, good old City Star Square. It, it's yes, yes. It's now a construction site for the, the underground, the new underground, the metro tunnels. Really? So what happened uh, to that hotel there? So the hotel is still there. There's a big box. They built it to hide the construction work and noise, just to hide the noise pollution. I think there was there's a lot of noise from heavy boring machines and dust and all that stuff. So it's standing right in front of the hotel and it's blocking the lower floors. So what station is uh, that going to be? Uh, I have no idea. It would right, be extension. part of the uh, Flinders Street station, Flinders I think. Street. Wow. So it, it goes under the St. Paul's Cathedral, the Anglican Cathedral. Oh, uh, that's going to be interesting. Church. Yep. So, so... There. So that well, the cathedral is not collapsed yet. So, because <laughs> it is built on swamp land, I don't know. You might have uh, to. Yes, yes. And so, when we talk about uh, taking pictures, I guess for me there would be a certain responsibility as well to document something mm. of the present, because one day it's going to slip into the past and it'll become sort of a historical document. I enjoy looking at all these old archival pictures of what Melbourne used to be like. The horse-drawn trams, for example. People, every, uh, the crowds and all the men would be wearing tall hats or something and holding canes and the, the women will be in the, the old Victorian outfits and uh, mm-hmm. large frilly hats. And they'll have a car too, one of these old vintage sort of cars, spokes for the wheels. And so the time when they took those pictures, I think it wasn't very interesting to those people because that's what they saw every day. Yeah. But now it's of interest to me because it's something really old. I say, hey, to myself, uh, I'll, I'll say to myself, hey, that's what people used to live like. And in this image, the water wall is no longer. It's been right. demolished. So in a way, when I look at this wall, I, I'll say to myself, hey, that's the water wall that once stood there. It's no longer there. So in a way, I've documented, I've captured that image, and it's saved that image, that moment in history, that year or two that the water wall was standing. Now it's no longer. So I've sort of recorded something. It's a document mm. in a visual image. Yeah. So I guess that's important to me when I take pictures. I like looking at fashions, for example, the way people dress. Mm. And if I were to live long enough, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, this is going to look quite interesting. Uh, I took this in the autumn, as you can see, this uh, young girl is creating some artwork and the water wall. It's a fun wall. Children would stick leaves and oh, create right. their own art. Is and, that any temporary? Just, is that like just uh, a temporary? The, the wall itself was a permanent structure. It was built there for, I, I don't know, for, for people to interact, create their own art. It was there for about a year or two, or maybe more than that. But with the construction going on City Square, it was in a way, so they had to demolish it. So um, but, um, but this lady's artwork, would that stay on? Or would that be removed? No, no, that's just temporary. All the children oh, would just... Oh, right. It's, stick, yeah, it's a temporary on. wall and they just do that and then it's it's a permanent wall but whatever they did there they stuck stickers there whatever uh yeah. because it sticks to the water the wet wall right yeah uh, yeah 
and the water will be just coming down in a curtain like that. But yeah. the, the leaves somehow stick in it. So you get every day people sticking leaves in it. And, and, and oh, right. Something. Okay. But so like the next day yeah. when would sort of. It'll be gone. This thing oh, will be yeah. gone. It's all transient. Yeah. Okay. So, so, oh, wow. So, uh, so I call it the fun wall because people really have fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, Cute. Uh, children that just press their hands to fill the wet water and mm. and and, and uh, the, the wet wall and, and fill the water coming down just like what they did uh, they would do at the art gallery yeah the art gallery uh, the national you're not national to stick gallery anything. you can't yes, stick yes. anything on that wall yes yes so yeah. so this one is just I totally fun. missed that so that was yeah. about 2011 yes yes okay so it's quite some time back mm, okay so we'll move. On to the next one? Yes. Yeah. One of my favorite places I go there all the time is Victoria Market. Now, who doesn't like Victoria Market? I just go there to get my fresh vegetables, fruit. Uh, I go there every week, sometimes twice. And on occasion, you would have some kind of performance, uh, cultural. There's a Sri Lankan festival. There's the fully Polish festival. And they would have special food served. This one was a tango sort of thing. Uh, yeah. There's this wonderful couple, and they were dancing the tango, and they were alone there. And it wasn't very interesting at first. But then I noticed the seagulls were sort of <laughs> dancing. dancing down in the corner. So Doing the flamingo. And, <laughs> and uh, had they been flamingos, it would be much, much better, you know. Uh, but they're not. They're just boring, seagulls. boring seagulls. You see seagulls you know, just... everywhere. Is, that grass? is it grass or is that concrete on the ground? Yeah, that's that's just uh, vitamin, I think, uh, what do you call it? Uh, okay. Looks like grass. Yeah. I don't Asphalt or whatever. Yeah, asphalt. So, uh, okay. When you when you convert everything to black and white, you don't know what it is, actually. Oh, I'm just trying so. to figure out which, which area this is. Yeah, Did that so close it's Victoria. off that street? Uh, it's a closed off street. Is it's that a public, yeah. public square. And it's in between the two sheds. Okay. Uh, and as you look towards the crowd watching the couple, yeah. that will be facing Flinders Street. Mm-hmm. Right? If, you, if you walk some distance through several blocks, you'll be passing Lonsdale Street, Burke Street, Collins Street, and then you end up in Flinders Street. So that's the direction just to give you an idea of where I took the picture from. So what year was this taken? Uh, this would be 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I, I, I don't have the dates with me, but uh, over a, a span of time, I think 2015, 2016. So I, I like a little bit of comedy in photographs. Uh, yeah. And by having that pair of seagulls dancing, it's just a little bit of a juxtaposition. You know? <laughs> did they, like did they have, get more money than the... <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> You just give them chips, right. you know, like uh, chips. Uh, potato <laughs> chips, and, and they'll be happy. From and, and that's what they're there for. I thought I'll convert it into uh, black and white. And there's always a question, what? why do you convert things to black and white? And some mm. things you live in color. I think it's just to take away the distractions uh, of color, signage yeah. and stuff like that. And that's focus on the subjects at hand. So it makes yeah. it, you're directed towards the subjects, what the picture is saying rather than mm. color, too much color sometimes. And this one worked well in black and white. I thought I'll just leave it monochromatic. Yeah. So it's it's wow. nice. I like uh, movement as wall i just uh don't fancy taking pictures of people just sitting down and having a smoke if that's the case then i'd like to see a lot of body language the way a person is waiting for example it can be just boring but an example uh, if a person is sitting down and just thinking there would be a difference between this and this yeah 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 uh yeah. they're very different things if you see yeah. a couple facing each other sitting down and facing each other mm. and there'll be a difference yeah. this there's yeah. a lot of thinking going on. So because essentially pictures, photographs, the still image, they don't have a picture does not have a voice yeah. or smell. So you got to give it voice. And it's by you have to leave it to the viewer to decide mm. uh, what it's saying. So the image speaks to the viewer, actually. Yeah. So the photographer captures the scene and try to include elements that might convey to the viewer what the picture is saying. Uh, but it's really up to the viewer to decide what this means, what yeah. that means. Yeah, all that. Yeah, that stuff. So, Amazing. so you try to put those things in to give voice. So the pictures have got no voice; they don't have any audio, and you try to give it movement as well. So I love capturing movement, like this picture. There's a lot of energy in it. The picture is not moving at all, but you get an idea. You can almost see where the dancers are heading to. And the birds as well. And the uh, the interest of the spectators standing around as well. They're standing at some distance. 
So you know uh, by looking at that that the dancers are moving around a lot because they need space. Yeah. So you've uh, captured that space movement. So you can imagine that the dancers are really moving around. And they're not spot dancing. Yeah, they, they've occupied the whole space. Yeah. And you can almost visualize if you shut the eyes. Uh, imagine the music as well. You know, it's tango, so you know yeah. the kind of music that they're playing as well. So yeah. we've got Melbourne Cup. What year was this yeah. one? Well, Melbourne Cup is an iconic event, uh, but I've never actually been to the Cup. I've never gone to Flemington to watch the races. It's not my thing, horse racing. You know, like uh, I've ridden horses a few times and that's it. Yeah, uh, not, not a super It's not fan. my passion, passion yeah. but uh, what I like is the whole event itself. It's a festival. Mm. It's a carnival, you know, people dress up for it. It's really a, a dress up day. So I wonder who actually watches the race, you know, itself. I suppose a lot of betting people do. Yeah, betting but, people yeah. do, but the women, well, the ones who are going in for fashion are just yeah, pretty yeah. much networking yeah. and trying to be seen. Yeah. And, and I like it. One, one yeah. day, I, I, I always promise myself one day I'm going to the cup. Mm. But I, I never have so far. This one was taken in 2013. No, all well, those years ago, so yeah. it's quite a number of years ago. I don't. I wonder what. I always wonder what she's doing now. She's still <laughs> wearing that big fascinator yeah. on her head, or, or what? Uh, you know? I don't know. Maybe a salon went bust. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. And, you and know. the magic is that uh, at three o'clock, yeah, the Melbourne Cup would have been run. You know, after three, that's the big event. There are a few other races after that, but nobody stays on for the other races. Yeah, are just minor races, and yeah, everybody yeah. is just trying to get home. Yeah. Or to the bars. They're, they're all trying to get to the bars and clubs and, and they would come back to the city in their train and mm-hmm. they would come pouring out of Flinders Street Station. Of the many entrances, they'll be pouring out there. The, 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 the ladies all dressed like, like this, like what you see. Uh, yeah. Fascinators. Maybe, Sunburn. Maybe, uh, if it's a good day. Of the day and, and, yes. So, and so there'll be a line of photographers uh, waiting there. Uh, <laughs> waiting for the spillage for the drunken And, people. and yeah. I would see familiar faces, photographers that I've walked with and in our group yeah. meets. And they would there we'll say hi. And they've got all their telephoto lenses, their big lenses. And I would bring my little camera along. And, and it's not easy to photograph people. And some people, some photographers would be shoving their cameras Mm. people's faces and, and flashing this one Italian guy I, I've not seen him for quite a while is and he the old man? Shove, no. Uh, no no he's a young guy he's from yeah. Italy and he would shove his camera right into the face and flash them because he thinks that's the way the closer you get the better your images are <laughs> and I suppose he's taken some masterpieces I've not seen his work I don't know I <laughs> I, I've not seen he and, shoved and his camera in my face and the, the strange thing is that these people are pouring out of the races are either yeah. uh, drunk or too happy or too busy trying to head to the bars to notice that yeah. the photographers I mean, they're, quite, are... they're quite well behaved. I mean, I've seen yeah, worse yeah. photos. I mean, this lady's, you know, just, just yes, tipping, yes. but there's some spillage. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually noticing now with looking at this photo closely mm-hmm. of the um, the Indian mum and her little child on the steps, like such a yeah, contrast. Yeah, yeah it's um, a contrast. People sit in the steps and everyone sits in the steps. And yeah. Sometimes and, you, know, you get an and, and occasional... I'm yeah, and just looking at the, the little girl's face watching this, you know, watching such a different culture, like yeah. kind of reminded me when I was just looking looking out onto the yeah. uh, the Aussies and, and what they did yeah. culture-wise and stuff like that. And she's probably thinking, wow, those ladies have big flowers on their head and she probably has no idea. Yeah, one day I'm going to dress up like that and mother yeah. says no. Yeah, because uh, they cost yeah. a lot of money. I mean, these women, I don't know, they spend weeks dolling themselves up and getting the right outfits and and those fascinators are mm. definitely in the hundreds yeah, yeah. unless you make so, it yourself it's crazy yeah. Yeah. so that's the spot we would wait mm. uh, a whole bunch of photographers like the media and mm. it looks quite comical actually and we'll but there's a lot of people passing by and it's very hard to get a shot yeah, uh, the right one, well framed, subject matter, background, everything like that. I see this. You have to observe and anticipate. Uh, like I was saying just now, it's important to mm. predict. Can't actually predict. You anticipate where these two ladies will be walking, the direction yeah. they would be walking, yeah. and you can almost say where they'll be walking. But you can't control the crowd. People are passing in front of you, yeah. blocking the way, and you have to get lucky sometimes. So I only took two shots of this, and this is the second shot yeah i think and you pray to mm-hmm. god that it would nail the focus on the subject and it, yeah. it did on yeah. checking back the camera i say well well done you've got the expression yeah uh, she's wonderful actually when she saw me standing with the camera aiming she actually 
came in front of the camera and gave me that big magical million dollar smile. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. She loves she, it. Yeah, She's a yeah. and she moved on. A fleeting yeah. split seconds, yeah. she did that. She just smiled and moved on. She probably uh, is someone that is famous that we're just not aware of. She is probably um, a TV celebrity that we don't know. Of. Don't know, don't know. But she or she just gave me that, that big smile, and I thought that's magic. And it, it makes a day when someone, even if safe, I, I, I wasn't taking any pictures, but if yeah. someone did smile like that. And I like that man in his hat walking uh, all dressed up in the uh, the, the background. Oh, right. You know, He's got a hat on. That's uh, and it says the, the, the famous iconic hat shop, yep. uh, City Hat. So sell the old that's, steps and hats. That's been there for young. So it's I been know. There that's it's since, there. since Flinders started. I remember, uh, gee, I was just talking about that the other day. I just mm-hmm. love the whole 1930s fashion with men with their mm-hmm. steps and hats and everything. And mm-hmm. nothing better than three-piece suit with a hat. Mm. So who who hats. wears hats these days? You know, like really, I mean, hardly anyone. Yeah. Uh, except I remember, Mel- Melbourne yeah. Cup, yes. You would yeah. see a whole number of them. Yeah, on Oaks Day or Blokes Day. <laughs> that's the only time yeah, I see yeah. you guys making an effort. But, yeah. Oh, wow. So that's 2013. Okay. This looks like, what, the grand final? <laughs> uh, I think it was one of the preliminary finals. Ah, as far as I know. okay. Uh, 2010, I believe, or 2011. Okay, we're going back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, going back. This these kids are married with kids of their own now. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think children. it was me. <laughs> yeah. So no. I mean, after a game or a night game, you get the, the trams and trains filling up with people, and the winning team is normally very cheerful, and yeah. the, the losing team would be kind of subdued, quiet, and it will be singing their theme song, yeah. "Good Old Collingwood Forever." Yeah. It says that. Go Pies, the Collingwood yeah. supporters. Yeah. So if you're not from Melbourne, you wouldn't know yeah. who they are, but Pies. I'm a Collingwood supporter, but I don't uh, yeah, yeah. support so, Eddie. So <laughs> pies is just short for, for Magpies. Uh, yeah, Magpies, yeah. Uh, Magpies is the uh, the emblem or the uh, for Collingwood Football yep. Club, and it says the Aussie Aussie rules. Uh. So when you're in a tram, you're just there, and I was looking at a flag, and these kids, uh, children were just falling up, and you were really proud of that moment. He probably warned at night. And one of the uh, the children uh, says, you want a flag? And he wanted to give me that flag. I said, no. I was really quite moved. He wanted to give me the flag. I said, no, 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 just hold it up and I'll take a picture. And yeah. I took about two, three shots. And, and I said, no, just hold it over your face like that. So it makes it more, more interesting. So I, I suppose, you know, like, because it happened so fast and they moved on the next stop, you just got off. So yeah. Uh, as they say, street photographs should candid. I suppose in a way it's posed, but it doesn't matter. It these, was, yeah, these boys would be young yeah, men now. And they're it's probably, a fleeting moment. Yeah. yeah, and they'll probably look at this and go, gee, that's a picture of me as a boy. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they've seen it. Uh, it'll be nice. Some photographers would always chase up the subjects, uh, the yeah. kids, and, and do a repeat. But uh, these kids will have beards now and, and <laughs> scars. <laughs> probably some, some Hopefully scars. Hopefully they're on the, the right side of the law, being Collingwood's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chip to your anyway. teeth and... Yeah, uh, oh, mullets, so. mullets, perhaps, and, and yeah, flannel, well, out, flannel, out, uh, flannel, at, uh, uh, shirts. They're all wearing mullets. These younger generation. Mullets, I don't know what's yeah, wrong yeah. with them. It's come back, isn't it? It's I don't know. Back. I don't know. All the all the kids. Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. scary. Uh, but I thought children, children being children, they're quite generous. Uh, they're very yeah. generous. He wanted yeah. to give me the whole flag, and, yeah. and re- recruit me into the uh, the yeah. The, why not? The magpie team. As um, if there's not enough supporters as there is. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, so. Oh, wow. So I like that crowded scene, the uh, mm. the markings in the glass, and it shows the Melbourne in its uh, carefree days, mm. you know. And, and I look back and I see, wow, you know, like uh, what a life, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is Moomba pre-COVID. Moomba, it, it's, it's unique in Melbourne. It's... Uh, 2020? Uh, celebrated in Labor Day, the Labor Day long weekend. Oh, sorry, 2019. Uh, so it was 2019. Oh, uh, no, no, 2020. This is 2020. But hang on. We went into lockdown. Uh, no, March, uh, March, April, the well, late March 2020. So this was just uh, shy of lockdown. Just shy, just shy. Wow. And this, okay. And, and yeah. just shy of it. I wasn't planning to go into Mumbai that early. I would normally try to go in a little bit later to try to see where the people are waiting. I didn't know because they kept changing the starting points uh, because they used to have it from Swanson Street right in the CBD and it created a lot of traffic problems and stuff like that. So they would start where? At the art center or, or the shrine, say. Yeah. yeah, just before the shrine, there's a bend 
at botanical gardens and that's where they would start. So the, the starting points kept changing and I just happened to be in the city. I got off the train at Parliament Station and I was walking down mm. and I don't normally get off Parliament Station. I just got off there. I just decided to have a casual stroll, no aim in mind. And I saw this wonderful girls all dressed up like this coming down and I think it was Russell Street and I was in a uh, little Flinders, La- uh, Flinders Lane or Little Collins Street that's right. And I saw them and there was, there was a lot of shadows in the city. The buildings were casting shadows. It was shafts of light coming through. Yeah. So I chased these girls down towards uh, Flinders and took a few pictures. And what happened then was the, the last girl, she loves the camera. Uh, <laughs> this reminds uh, me of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just she, like she loves the camera because camera. I yeah. took a few more shots at the parade itself. And she always kept looking at the camera and waving. <laughs> uh, so she made the shot, I think, uh, Okay. Somebody, I, I took this to the printers and he actually observed things that I didn't see. That's, you get someone from the outside, someone who didn't take the picture, a non-photographer, he's a printer. Mm. And he notices things like uh, what he liked about this image, because I was asking me to choose between two, two of the same scene, one here and one slightly after, or was it before? And he liked this one is because he could see the guy controlling the traffic, stopping the traffic to let the ladies uh, move through uh, across the uh, street. It was very quiet and it was quite early. They must have dressed up in a room somewhere in a hotel up yeah. the road or something. And that's where yeah. they dressed up. And they were just well, going to the beginning of the parade. So the parade had not even begun. It was a different world then. Uh, just before. It is early March, early March 2020. And then things changed so, after that. And- so so folks who aren't from Melbourne, Moomba's, well, pretty much it was an Aboriginal festival, wasn't it? I, I that, That's an Aboriginal of- word. I, I don't know what it means. So I should do some research. It was, it was bit, isn't it, be- beginning of autumn? Beginning of autumn. Beginning uh, of autumn celebration. And usually it's like a Christmas parade or something like that. But Yes, um, yes. They would have floats. Lots yeah. of floats. Clubs. And people would get very creative with their floats and the big trucks with big elephants and stuff like yeah. that. Dancers with Not, not quite cannons. like, you know, <clears throat> carnival or anything, but. No, no, Melbourne not at that scale. It's, yeah, it's, it's that Melbourne small, style. But it's, it's yeah. good fun. It's yeah. good fun. Yeah. Oh, geez. Who would have known back then? Let us know about this one. There's something that I always do is that I never leave home without my camera. So this is something that I've been done, doing for years and years, and I always carry the camera. I can't leave home without the camera. It's got to come with me. Uh, so I'll feel like I'm, I'm just naked without the camera. So it's really odd. Even if I don't plan to take any pictures, the camera has to come with me. And, and I guess it's not like you want to be ready for things to happen. Uh, I don't expect things to happen. I just bring the camera as, as habit, as a practice. And sometimes you see things, sometimes you don't. Maybe you don't take a picture for a whole week and that's fine. In this image, I was walking around South Bank. Just on the right-hand side would be the casino building. And that yep column you see that black column on the right side uh, is where the flames come out i think the Um, gas flames yep the gas flames that uh supposedly kills seagulls every night yep yep they barbecue them every hour so so man do they still do that i'm not sure i think the seagulls would have learned by now (laughs) (laughs) they still blow the gas yeah, yeah, they will have by now observed and uh, learned the skills of anticipation when the flames are going to come out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then uh, while walking here, I see a guy who is a middle aged guy, quite fit looking, and he was removing his shirt and he just proceeded to lie down. So it all happened right in front of me. I was actually walking on the right hand side of the frame where those people are sitting on the steps. So I was yeah. walking up on the, yeah. the pavement above the steps uh, walking yeah. by and I see this guy and I said hey that's interesting so, I decided to sunbake in a city and and, and, and on the fake that's to... fake grass yeah that's <laughs> fake grass yeah so it's all green and it's fake grass and he lay down there and I took a picture uh, two shots from the side I said this is not interesting let's try to go behind him firing towards the city and I see these lines these leading lines and he sort of uh, parted his feet like that and it looks like he's opposing those lines yeah. Like uh, the lines are leading into the picture and he's opening up his legs. Like it's, uh, it's opposing, it's not yeah. following those, those lines. So yeah. I thought that's really interesting. And I remember only taking two shots of this. Uh, I took the first one and wasn't straight. So I decided to move closer towards him. I was just concerned that he might just wake up. Well, the face wasn't important anyway. It was really his legs, the way they are positioned and those, those lines. I thought it was quite comical. 
Yeah. So I decided to take the picture. And, and I kind of like those, those buildings at Collins Street. You see those two buildings with the spires, that, those, those antenna. A friend of mine says he loves that, those buildings. And those two buildings are his favorite buildings. And he's from Kathmandu, Nepal. Wow. So he finds all the other buildings quite boring. And he says, actually, that's my favorite really? building. The ones with the spire. Yeah. Okay. The ones with the spire because so it lights up at night. <laughs> So, yeah. so, I mean, there are no high rises like that in Kathmandu. So uh, I met him in Kathmandu anyway. So. Yeah. so this photo was a winning photo for you? I don't enter many competitions because mm. they're very expensive. And some of them are frauds, actually. They're a little bit scamish, I think. They make you pay a lot of money to get. And you look at the prize money and it's not great. And I don't like, uh, because competitions may try to compete and you're not relaxed. And then you try to worry about what other people are taking when you want to do photographs uh, for me it's a meditative process I, d- I don't compete you know like uh, when I'm taking pictures it's it's a calming process I'm not going out there thinking I'm going to take a winning shot you know I, I'm not thinking that at all I'm just looking for certain elements lines and stuff like that and, and subject matter has got to be interesting comical there was a free contest that was happening every two years I think in Melbourne it stopped now because the major sponsor Michael's cameras folded close shop. Really? When? Uh, they've been, they've been uh, sponsoring this com- competition for many, many years, I think. When did I, they I wasn't aware. When uh, did they-, they folded up uh, last year. Peter Michael was tired of it. The boss uh, yeah. was tired of it. And he told me that he's, I knew, in fact, even before the pandemic struck, he was tired of the business. He was tired of the people. He loved cameras. He loved the whole process. But he started doing these very long walks. They were like 100Ks a day. And he was like sort of finding himself uh, life. How uh, old was he? Uh, I think he would be in his 50s. Or, uh, Only. Wow. Okay. Six, sixties, maybe. I, I don't right. know. It's hard to say. Pretty good camera He's thing. a man of quite small stature. Okay. Uh, but when you spoke to him, you saw a bigger man. Uh, so his stature wasn't there, but he had a presence. I think. Yeah. Uh, a lot of passion. He spoke with a lot of passion. I think. Okay. Very generous man, at least towards me. He gave me his uh, top floor space, the exhibition space where the, the camera museum was yeah. for free for two consecutive years. So I didn't have yep, to pay a right. dime. Yeah. Uh, so he gave me a lot of exposure there. So generous man. Mm-hmm. And I took part in this contest and because it's free, you can enter any number of pictures. Mm-hmm. Some people were putting in 20 and, and I just put in three yeah. photographs. And out of the three, this was my least favorite. So when they sent me an email saying, hey, you've been shortlisted, come to the event. There was an invite only. You can bring a friend. Yeah. And I brought a friend along and we went there and I didn't know what image they chose uh, as a shot list. So I went to the uh, the Docklands Library, uh, Victoria Harbour, if you know what that is, a new yeah. library, very nice space. And they had a big TV screen showing all these pictures. All the entries were given some kind of recognition. The ones that were shortlisted were on the wall, framed. The moment I saw which of my three images they chose, I said, what the hell? They chose the worst one. You know, <laughs> this is the absolutely worst one, the least favorite of mine. I didn't even want to put this in. Sorry. What was the theme that they had to get the photographer? Uh, it was to celebrate Melbourne. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th- th- there was a criteria saying uh, that you pictures that depict how people celebrate Melbourne. Yeah. So a lot of people were putting pictures of sunsets and things like <laughs> yeah. generic shots and some are very good tram rides and characters in a picture of Chinatown and how yeah. people celebrate yeah. would celebrate Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah. A vibrant city at the uh, that one of the Anzac Day, I think, at the, the shrine as well. It was a very dramatic shot and there were different categories as well and they were announcing, started making speeches and they were announcing and all the winners, different categories, but I wasn't paying attention. I was just talking to the other people and when they finished that side of it i thought oh that i told my friend that's the end of it all the winners have been announced he says no that's one more category the amateurs which is the main category and lo and behold when they announced that the name of my picture i captioned it uh sunny side up when they announced it's and the <laughs> winner is sunny side up i said oh fuck <laughs> sunny side up yeah because it's it's also yeah, free it's like money the, 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 <laughs> the prize money actually for no entrance fees because yeah. Michael sponsored all the prize yeah. money, actually, and, and there was no entrance fee, and everyone yeah. can go in. There were, uh, I think, 2,500 entries. Uh, wow. Uh, that many entries. So, oh, yeah. And I didn't think that I stood a chance as well. When I won it, I just I couldn't believe it because it's $1,500, <laughs> which is very generous. Yeah. It's generous. Uh, I bought my flight, went to Bali after that. was my prize was money. Good old days. 
That was a good old days and you can get a bail at that price. Yeah, funny thing is that the I was speaking to some people after the, the prizes had been awarded and the journalists who judged the competition, there were three judges in fact, and they spent three days with their laptops in one common table discussing the images. Uh, yeah. Of they had to sift through the whole lot. In fact, yes, yeah. hours and hours and hours. And and she was present there, a very tall woman. And uh, she said to me, "That's a very good image." And I was so thankful. I said, "Yeah, thank you very much." And I thought it was the worst. <clears throat> there was nothing. So I'm thinking, if I were to judge the image, I wouldn't pick this. Yeah. Uh, and she said, and she told me certain things. It's a rare one as well. I said, what do you mean? And she says, we don't get many summer shots in Melbourne. No. So I, I didn't know what she, she meant. Maybe now looking back, I can see that not many people actually celebrate summer in this manner, no. sun baking right in the middle of the city. Yeah, so, in front of a casino. Yeah, in front <laughs> in of the casino. So, so you don't get many of this. Uh, maybe that's what she meant. But So it helped me. It, it, so actually, what she said was actually helpful because it makes me think now. When I look at images, perhaps that I shouldn't try to uh, take a winning shot, for mm. example. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't try that. I should just relax and see what's funny to me and what I like and just take mm-hmm. take pictures. Just keep on taking and taking pictures. Yeah. Uh, put it in your drive, digital photography. It's easy to do that. You can just take a lot of images. Yeah. Uh, don't take too many of the same scene. Just if you've not framed it correctly, then correct yourself and be fast yeah. uh, before the police comes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was back then. <laughs> uh, I've been I've been stopped by the police because I was taking pictures of people being arrested and stuff like that. <laughs> Just being journalistic. You would have been really busy. <laughs> no, no, you can't take pictures like that. I said, no, why, why not? You know, like, uh, all right, fair enough. Uh, oh people God. are getting arrested and, and you, you, you push your luck, but uh, you learn from there. You got to be quick. You don't. That's why yeah. I tried the fishing method. Like I say, waiting in the street right. corner and waiting for things to pass. And I realize it's not me. I have to be moving around a lot. Yeah. And if I see something, I see something. If I don't, yeah. I don't. You know, that's how it is. And not get upset and I'll have a nice coffee and go back home and watch TV. You know, yeah. it's not a competition or anything like that. Mm. No, I, I like it because, you know, when Melbourne's hot, it's kind of deserted in a way. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Everyone goes to the yeah, bank yeah. or leaves the, leaves the city yeah. and whoever's yeah. left behind, it's just, you're just frying like fried egg. Sunny side up. I was very surprisingly very quiet then. Mm. Yeah, well, I think all it was the other about, guys, they're uh, all like, yeah, uh, you know, uh, just dehydrated and slouchy because of the heat. I don't remember it as being very hot because 40 degrees, you wouldn't get someone lying down like that. No, you'd burn that, yourself. That's in, turf. that synthetic grass would yeah, melt your skin. Synthetic grass would be definitely fried. Uh, you try to pull yourself up, you'll be pulling up the whole carpet. <laughs> it'll be melted. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be into your skin. Okay, so this is uh, Moomber again. Moomber again, but it's uh, a different year, a year later, 2021. Yes. Okay, yes. in between uh, lockdown. I uh, I think it was Sunday, a friend of mine, we went for a drive. Uh, I think the restrictions were lifted a little bit mm-hmm. so we could drive a certain distance. So we went for a drive and he was dropping me back and I said, no, drop me in the city. Yeah. So he dropped me in a city on Elizabeth Street, and I see these uh, wonderful girls all dressed up as birds. <laughs> and I, yep. I just rushed to get off the car. I said goodbye to him. I had to be fast. <laughs> I took some pictures from yep. behind. It didn't look right at all. So I chased them. I'm not a <laughs> bird catcher. I guess I'm a hunter. <laughs> uh, so I had to walk in front of them, and they were sort of posing for some photographers. Oh, okay. And they wanted they wanted to pose for me. I said, no, no, just walk on. I'll get what I can. So they they were just walking because I wanted the movement. Yeah. I was more interested in motion. Yeah, yeah. Like they were flying with the costume. And I you have to wish for luck that nobody would walk past because I don't yeah. like stopping people. Oh, this is the people... GPO, right? This is on Berkshire. Yes, Street yes, Hall. yes. So, yeah. When people ask, uh, Melbournians tend to be very polite. They try to stop. And I always encourage them to walk by, walk by. Don't worry mm. about me. I'm no... I'm nobody here. Mm-hmm. Uh, just ignore me. Just keep walking by. I'll get the shot. And if I don't, I don't. Uh, so it's not precious. Yeah. Because I want that moment. Uh, the moment you ask people to stop, then it's not right anymore. I look at this picture and I see this is a window of opportunity. It's because when the restrictions were lifted a little bit, there was a little bit of freedom, I suppose. We still couldn't hold a full Moomba parade. Uh, so the Moomba parade was cancelled. But they modified themselves. They could actually send the performers in small little groups in snippets. Okay. Uh, to appear in different parts of the city. Oh, wow. Uh, So that's what they did. 
Yeah. And I just happened to be there to see this for just a few moments and I took this shot because I thought it was quite important to show that life goes on. And you know what? I would think this was probably, you know, even a 1970s or, or late 60s, yeah. only because of what they were wearing, you know, the, the boots, mm-hmm. even the glasses. I would not have picked it out yeah. that it was 2021. They proceeded, in fact, right after I took the shot, they proceeded and turned left into Burke Street Mall where the giant purse is where yeah, normally yeah. the buskers would be performing. And it was yeah. just, uh, I think he's American. He's been here, an African-American. Uh, he's been performing in Melbourne. He plays the bass and he was oh, rapping the and playing the bass, yeah. the yeah. bass guitar. And his dancers just went and joined him and were, were dancing yeah. around him. So he oh, thought, wow. wow. <laughs> and there was a crowd watching on as well. Yeah. And, and that's it. So I, I think it was quite an event. And I stopped talking to pic- uh, taking pictures then. I took a few shots. And that was mm. not, not very exciting. So... Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Yeah, I didn't know we even did Moomba. I mean, geez. Uh, and sometimes you want sort of a clean shot. And as you look through the feathers, you can see some people sitting in the steps. But thank you. Oh, yeah. Obs- yeah, I see it there. Uh, I just noticed that obscured. now you pointed out, yeah, there's a sandals. I took about three shots of this. I think three, very few, because they were walking and I had to be fast. I was just happy with what I got. And, and What colour were they? White or yellow? I can't tell. Uh, they were white. Yeah, and the uh, things in the heads they were, I think, mimicking the sulfur crested uh, cockatoos. The cockatoos, com- common noisy. Yeah, yeah, ah, get them. Ah, ah, yeah. Noisy cockatoos yeah. that come come in large flocks. Uh, yeah, attacking all the trees and. and nah, and, uh, but you, you hear them in some of my videos as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah, readings because so, they're just so. outside my window. So I think they were mimicking those 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 those, those birds. Huh? Uh, yeah, cockatoos. Cool. Oh, all right. Okay. They were very coordinated. I think they're trained dancers. They're trained dancers because they were very, the, the movements are very coordinated as well. But yeah. At the same time, they were very polished and they would just look like they were having fun. This is one of my um, favorite ones of recent time. Yeah, and this it's is on- recent, actually. Yeah. Uh, taken in March uh, 2020. Uh, yeah. About slightly later than the Mumba shot. Yeah. So this uh, is the, when the, um, uh, people left, started leaving the city. Yes, yes. I think the uh, a lot of the Tao locks, the, the Asian, uh, mainly Chinese and Taiwanese students were uh, trying to meet the deadline had been announced. The government had yep. announced this is the time that no fly-ins, no fly-outs. So this is just before the deadline was yep. coming into effect and the students were panicking and they just left all their belongings out in the street. Those and, who can and, afford uh, left, <laughs> uh, pretty much. Bookshelves and stuff like that. And I thought that was quite interesting. And I, I didn't photograph that scene. Then, mm-hmm. uh, then I thought, well, I'm missing something here. Let's do the right thing. And hopefully the mattress is still there. I came back the next day, uh, late afternoon. And so I happened that the sun was shining like this in a shaft of light. I've been going to that same spot Where almost it? daily. Uh, it's in Little Burke and Guess Lane, I think. Uh, Little okay. Street, down, closer down towards King Street. Right, yep. We're pretty and much I, done. Yep. So I, I saw this shuffle of light coming in. It's a certain time of the day it would come in. But I've been trying to go there to see the same scene, but it's not it's not happening. I go there at the right time and, and it's not happening. The shuffle of light. So maybe I should go there. I'll, I'll look at the metadata of this picture and just look at the date, the time. And then I'll go there and just see if it happens again, that the like would come in. This is one of those uh, exceptions to the rule that my preferred way of photographing is normally to hunt, uh, to go around, walking around. One of those fishing moments, I would just wait and see what happens. Because the shadows were kind of beautiful. They were long shadows and I had to wait for the right moment where two people would come walking in opposite directions. Mm. Like I imagine the high noon scene, the gunfight, that the two cowboys would be walking yeah. away yeah, from each true. other. Yeah. And I'll give you till sundown. <laughs> and they, they would turn around and shoot each other and the lucky one gets the shot. Okay, so no, I was just thinking, okay, I, I, I almost imagined that, that scene, that, that this, this yeah. is high noon, except the sun, the shadows are a little bit long for high noon. So, Isn't there uh, a, a godfather thing about the mattresses in the movie? I'm not sure about that. Going uh, to the mattresses, isn't that a better? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Um I mean, I, it wasn't until you told me. I was kind of shocked at that people yeah, were just yeah. dumping furniture left, right, and center outside. Oh, you, you just kind of arrange for housing. They would just leave everything behind. There was a lot the, of. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, unfortunately, those who couldn't go back home, especially mm-hmm. the South Americans, had to stay yes, on yeah, a lot of and had no. Um, allowance or anything like that. Yes, yes. Support. A lot of the restaurants were actually quite generous. They were 
cooking and preparing uh, meals, uh, free meals, uh, to yeah. you realize that these people have fallen through the cracks, uh, yeah. getting any, any, any aid. And I speak to a lot of uh, small businesses, owners yeah. and, and people, and, and you learn a lot uh, when you see this, when you hear these stories, uh, what sort of help they're getting. Some businesses, they were not getting any help at all. Yeah, uh, pretty sad, and they're still suffering now. So if you didn't know, if you look at this picture, you wouldn't know what the story is. No. Uh, for me, at least, I think it's important that I've recorded something. Yeah. Uh, that, that this was happening because uh, were people taking furniture home with them did you witness any people re you know or did the council just come in and just got rid of it I suppose there were some bookshelves and chests and all that left so i suppose some of those things nobody takes the mattresses i mean it's gonna be out in the elements and stuff like that yeah 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 nobody takes oh, them man i saw lamb shits and, and, and lots of other things yeah know. they didn't have any time they just had to go they could probably weren't even allowed to leave their furniture with the landlord no uh, no because no, of the landlord but uh, the, the agents <laughs> get into trouble so they just yeah. I guess maybe there was some kind of private ar- arrangement that they would leave it out there and get the councils because councils are being quite uh, amenable as well they I suppose they would understand that these things was happening so you want to so how many days did they leave that rubbish out there oh well, uh, it's only a few days I think I went okay. back again yeah, to so. try try to see if I could get a better shot yeah uh, yeah and, didn't happen because they were all gone yeah. by then. So not even a week. And yeah. that's why you have to be, I guess my decision not to photograph it on the day that I saw it was quite a risk because had I gone on the next day and, but the like wasn't very attractive yeah. then. So I, I guess photography is about like this role. Yeah. This is not the kind of shot I would normally take. I think it's quite, quite unusual for me to take this sort of shot. But it's a historical moment, really. So maybe yeah. that's what I saw. If perhaps they didn't have those mattresses there, then, then it would be a different story. Okay, so what's this one? What what year was this? This would be last year, 2020, okay. I think. Perhaps this year. I've got to look at the files because I know it's recent. This is opposite Southern Cross Station at Burke Street, the intersection of Burke Street. Yep, okay. Burke Street, where the new skyscraper has come up, that twisty sort of building that... <sighs> Jeez, it's uh, been ages since I've been down. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, the, yeah, that's going to be the tall one, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite tall. It's not the tallest there, but it's quite tall. Okay. Well over 250 meters, I think. So that's so it's quite high, 75 stories. The only thing around there was the Krispy Kreme shop. <laughs> Is that around mm. there? That used to be there. Mm, not sure. I think that's been gotten rid of since this building has come up. <laughs> it's been ages since I worked in the city. Uh, anyway, so, so yep. Yeah, so this. This one, was still during. Uh, I think the building had not topped out yet. Uh, yeah. It's full height. So it's still in construction. As you can see, the mess inside is a lot of construction material and, and it's quite a windy day. Yeah. And with photography, you have to anticipate things, you know, what yeah. would happen, what would be comical. And that moment, I see this guy running from the opposite direction. And he was really running and forcing himself against the wind. Yeah. And of course, I captioned this, may the force be against you. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes things are not with you but against you and yeah this this wind and and like you say because the photographs you can't feel the wind in photographs no it's a visual medium so you have to show wind by showing movement mm-hmm. uh, so the tree is bending this way obeying the wind and the, the guy is defying the wind so you can feel like uh, when you look when i look at this image i can always feel the howling wind because mm-hmm. it was indeed howling yeah uh, there's a lot of skyscrapers being built in a city i don't know they have to do a wind tunnel test like because wind lands. can be quite wind can be quite dangerous it can push cyclists yeah. off their bikes yeah. and it's happened to one of my colleagues in fact she was pushed off and pushed off into the road traffic jesus scary is that why uh, they made it twisty the building so uh, the wind can go around and around uh, maybe i think it's just a fashion fashion statement it was inspired by <gasps> beyonce's uh curves that, that's what they say <laughs> that's what i hear that's what i hear i, I don't know if that's true or not but oh, it's still God. a nice building it's still yeah. a nice nice unusual building but i thought i'll capture this you have to be fast and was it going to repeat itself no it was just this fleeting moment i just photographed some other people and the wind had died so it was just gusts of wind so you had to be very quick anticipate and take the shot and sometimes you know it's not quick enough you just miss the whole thing so what if you miss it there are other opportunities i, I like a little bit of comedy shots so yeah. this is a story about wind it can be a windy city sometimes
Yep, definitely. Okay, this used to be my old haunt every day going into South mm-hmm. Bank to work. Acoustics are very good in this tunnel. Yeah, you get a lot of buskers playing mm. uh, the violin, guitar, whatever. And sometimes at night when I'm having a late night stroll in the city, I would just listen mm. to buskers. And of course, you have to be fair. You have to drop some dollars in your mm-hmm. hats, just get a freebie and just forget it, you know. So uh, when was this? Was this? This is uh, 2017, I believe. Okay, uh, yeah. So I'm thinking that doesn't look very crowded. Was that slightly off peak? No, this is a morning rush. Okay. Uh, the morning rush. It was actually quite busy. In fact, people were rushing to the office. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I've had it. <laughs> this, this must have been. Uh, and the crowd is heading towards Elizabeth Street. Yeah, Elizabeth oh, no, Street. No, so, uh, no, so Flinders Street and Elizabeth Street opposite side, of course. Yeah. When you cross Flinders Street, there's Elizabeth Street. Yeah, that. Uh, uh, and, a, and, and a tram stop. And a tram yep. stop, the last yep. tram stop. I'm usually going the other direction, South Bank. And I've always wanted to capture, I don't know, I've been obsessing about it, the office rush, what it is, what is it like? But just to take the office rush mm. wouldn't be interesting. It, I had to have over. something, <laughs> I had to have something opposing it, yeah. uh, something quite calm. And here was this uh, busker, this girl, a young girl, and she was playing classical music. Uh, it was very soothing. Mm. And I saw it from a distance on, when I was getting down towards Elizabeth following this crowd. And I thought I'll just juxtapose the two opposing groups. One is not in a rush at all. Mm-hmm. And it's one lonely person against the whole crowd. And, yeah. and she's playing very calming music. It's yeah. like a whole a contrast to the rush. Well, people, these people didn't have music in their heads. They were not in no position to stop. They were rushing to make time at the office. To get yeah. in the gates, uh, get in the sliding doors or revolving doors to the tower blocks. You know, like, yeah. uh, and I took the shot and I walked past her when the crowd had moved on. And that yellow card, uh, I should have taken a picture of it because it says that it's my last day in Melbourne and she's going off to Europe. Right. For you know, studying? For something else, maybe an adventure. So she was going there yeah. for maybe for a music uh, Scholarship. Uh, to pursue a music scholarship or something like wow. that. Didn't say much. It's the last day in, uh, in Melbourne. I think she's flying off that evening. Yeah. It says sitting at cards so on the day itself. She had time. She mm-hmm. made time to perform. And yeah, what but, I love about this is that she's kind of raising the frequency in the area. And, and this guy here yeah. and this lady up here both notice it and the rest are just like drones. I love it. Office, I love it. office zombies. Office zombies. Yeah, zombies, office zombies, zombies. But we've got two that have noticed her playing no, I, I love that stuff. You know, when they play classical in the middle of chaos or, you know, even just they, they used to just some singers, yeah, especially because yeah. the, the art precinct is just on the South Bank area. Yes. School and everything. So I wish there's more of that in that tunnel because the acoustics fantastic. The yeah, acoustics are very nice. And uh, I like the fact that uh, every time it, there's a thunderstorm, it floods, <laughs> yeah. you know. So yep. it's almost like a natural scene. This is not so detached from nature. Mm. It leaks everywhere. It's raining indoors. And, uh, yeah. It's wonderful. And the people will come, the cleaners will come and sweep up and mop up and vacuum all the water out because it's, yeah. uh, it's a tripping hazard. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just mad. I, I, I just like the flooding. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think it's great floods, doesn't it? <laughs> it floods occasionally. Yeah, and it will just go straight through. Were you there? Uh, Did you take photos of the floods when Elizabeth Street went? Were you there when it flooded? Uh, no, 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 no. it. it, that? it uh, Flinders Street was flooded and they showed it in the news and TV. One guy was actually swimming in Flinders Street. It he was actually doing years. he was actually doing the front crawl. He was swimming. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. And all that filth and sewerage and yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. Be sick. So when you take an image, sometimes you, there's more to it and, and you can read anything to the, the, the photographs and somebody else might read something different. This, if I had exhibited this, it's always interesting mm. to step back and that those are not your pictures. I like doing that actually in my, when, when, when I exhibit some pictures and I would just step back and listen to people discussing the images and I would not interrupt. I said, oh, this is what they think. Because the moment you interrupt and correct them, because there's no correct, how do I know what the correct story is, the, the right story is? I just took you know, the photograph. You can never know. It's interesting that the viewer, the person who looks at the image can, can put in a story, any story they want. And that's the wonderful thing about photographs. Uh, the, the story can be created by anyone who sees it based on their own experiences. They can read a story into it. And that's, that's uh, so you present, I think the photographer does not create the story. 
the photographer, he or she would present the opportunity for storylines to be read. That's the photographer's job, really. You you take an image and allow the viewer to create stories uh, within an image. So you, you're just giving them the opportunity. And that's a wonderful thing about photographs. They do that. And I when I look at old pictures, I see stories in other people's pictures. Sometimes they might correct me. No, that's not the right story. I don't do that. Leave it be.